Okay, so we have kindled this bonfire and unlocked it. There's also a way to like go around here and do an awkward jump. It's so much easier if you know how these walls work. So that's one detrimental thing of being not polite on these games. As you know, this mechanic where you can, you can attack or roll through a, uh, a wall like that. So here a lots of lots of persons died. Wow, doesn't this look like a trap? Okay, he didn't drop anything. I don't want to step inside the middle because I fear that the trap might activate. I remembered more of them being here. Large soul of the nameless soldier, and for that, they, those three trees would attack you. So that that here is the next place to go. Traverse the white light. This is one that disappears behind you, so no boss here. So up to the next place. What do we do next? Charmer head, yeah. Very charming tree that's moving. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. A moving tree here. So I think the first thing I'll do in this direction is okay. I use that because that's too long uh, too long of a wait for me to hammer through with the normal soul arrows. Okay. I know that's a waste, but I just wanted to go this way. That's the only place in the game where you can find these opponents and you can completely miss them. So when you come up to the next tree, you've already learned how that mechanic works, so you can just go ahead and Rub your face against it and do the great heavy sword arrow. As a melee fighter, it's there are way easier ways to deal with them. But as you can't lock onto them, it's difficult as a mage to do something else than just hugging them. <laughs> so we have to be careful as I know that there are ambushes in this forest. Not only one, more than one of them. Oh, as you see there's something big so we change to this. We go for the big one. Okay. Easy. Oh, they are one hit. I didn't remember that correctly, so we can use the small ones. There is a bit of uses. So these stone giants, they are quite difficult as to fight as a melee character because they have a spell that slows everything around them down. And they hit so heavy that you can't really block their attacks, so you have to roll to uh, avoid them, which isn't a very fun experience if you're sluggish as hell. And we get a soul of a proud knight, which is, I think, the biggest soul we found so far. 
Yeah, you can just look at the name and see how big a soul it is. And if it's called of a proud, a proud knight, it should be. I don't know if there's another one awaiting me inside this hallway. So I should change that. Uh, you can just look at the name and if it's sounding more ridiculous. Lying in ambush. Giant ahead. Thank you. Lying in ambush is also quite a nice way to put it. As he's quite literally lying in ambush. Oh. And he blocked it. And he blocked it again. And again. And again. And not again? Hey! Come towards me! And die. Could you drop something of your armor, please? I wanted to show my viewers how ridicu ridiculously heavy your armor is. No? Then I have to go away. And we get the wolf ring. That's the place... Uh, like, that's the corner where I fell off a cliff, where my head is now on the screen. That's where the glowing door is. So we got the item on the ledge. So let's look at the wolf ring. And as we have a ring slot open, we should just put it on. It's the wolf ring, one of the special rings granted to the four knights of Gwyn. The wolf ring belongs to Atorius the Abyss Walker. Atorius had an unbendable will of steel and was unmatched with a greatsword. And we now have more poise, which is shown by that weird fog that's emanating from us. And just go on and you also see the poised boost effect under our stamina bar. That symbol with the armor and the arrow pointing up next to it. I'm surprised we didn't get invaded yet. We, we have already shown that uh, well, the bells have already told us that this game is actively played right now. And I'm quite surprised we didn't get invaded yet. And because of the invasion was that I went that way instead of going to the more difficult part of this. Because I didn't want an invader to ruin my experience with peacefully going through the forest. Ah... Uh, if it didn't go through that way, that's me mashing the B button, <laughs> which is doing nothing right now because I was stunned on the ground. Oh, sort errors out. If it didn't go through, it would have killed him. And then I was hit a few more times. So we just go back and sit to recover our spells. Just so it's not nice. I didn't want an invader to come in during one of the... And just as I'm saying this, if I can't sit at a bonfire, that can mean only one thing. There is an invader trying to invade me, but it failed. So he that was a person which was uh, having internet issues. And it flagged him as connecting me, but because I uh, he, he didn't come through, so but he blocked others from invading me. So that was quite nice of him to have such a bad internet. Or my internet is bad, but I don't think so. And will I go for intelligence? It will make my spells stronger. It will make my spells stronger. I'll take that. Okay, go for the great heavy soul arrow for the big guys. No, we go for the great soul arrow. We go for the normal soul arrow. For the trees. As these three trees will have resurrected now. 
and will directly attack me as they have been woken up before and the game remembers that of course. And they will follow me through the level. And we hear a second one coming in. And he of was quite mad at that stone. That was a grab attack, which he missed. And then I missed a spell. So... Quite difficult for two persons being at this little spot together and miss each other. But we both missed, so... It's fair. Yeah, he matrix duck that spell. And we get another Blood Rage Clan. And we can go on to fight the big guy with the great heavy soul arrows. Don't go too f much ahead because there's other stuff, other opponents around here. And he immediately pick up the shield, but that's interesting. If I hit him while his shield is up, I do as much damage as I do with a great heavy soul arrow. Uh, with a with a great soul arrow. But if I hit him with a great heavy soul arrow, they the spells are named too. They're named too similar to each other. Uh, if I hit him with a great heavy soul arrow while his shield is up, I do as much damage as, uh, as I do with a great heavy soul arrow, uh, with a great soul arrow when I hit. Did I turn that around somewhere in that statement? I might. I know there's an ambush here. Normal soul, soul arrow is enough for this. So we also saw another one there and a statue, two statues. So we don't want to approach that item because that's sure death. Because these guys, these tree guys are the problem, not the big guys. The big guys are slow. They are very slow. Okay. But if I hit with that, it's worth it. Man, it's worth it. But if I want to be a reactionary, I have to use the faster one. Change to the big one again. Go a few meters through the forest here. To look if there are any other trees wanting to attack me right now? Okay, there are tree, two trees coming. Go for the great solars. Don't get turned around. They are quite difficult. Ah, uh, damn it. If you try to lock on while your character's turned away and the game can figure out who you want to lock on to. The camera just centers itself in the direction the play uh, the the character is facing, so that's not great. That's not a great experience to do that because you get so turned around, especially because I was already turned around by the damp forest region. Okay, now we defused the old ambush situation. And we can freely take the Elite Knight set. So let me go over there, where I can hear people coming through the water if they want to attack me. Let's read a description of the Elite Knight set. The Helm, Helm of a Nameless Knight, perhaps an Elite Knight of Astora. We already heard of Astora. Uh, Andre is from there. Although he was loath to give up on his undead mission, he perished at the undead asylum and went hollow. 
The armor is based on the fire warding heraldic symbol on its blue surcoat. Uh, that no, not the armor is based on that. The assumption it's a nameless knight from Astora is based on the fire warding heraldic symbol on its blue circuit. Gauntlets and leggings. Don't say anything else. The set is pretty heavy. And I can't even wear any of that, I think. No, I can't wear any. I can't. I can't take that. I have to be nim but agile. I can't be just sluggishly slowly moving around. That's not great for me. Okay, is there something here wanting to attack me? No, that's just normal stuff moving. That's someone wanting to attack me behind. That's an even worse trap as there's something dangerous ahead too. Which I can't lock onto, but you see the lizard on the tree. That's great. I really like free aiming in Dark Souls. Wow, I should use the, the small ones. This guy will poison and kill me. Wow, where does it go? God damn it. I think it only has two directions, left and right. Okay, I have to re-equip the binoculars, as they might help us aim, but it might also be bullshit, and that's from Dark Souls 2. Because I know they did that in with Dark Souls 2, that you could aim with the binoculars. Okay, you can use do that here too. Oh, now I can lock on, and now it has fallen off. Oh, go, 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 go. Okay, and we get a partisan, which is a spear-like weapon. It's a real name of a weapon, as every weapon here has a real name of a weapon. We didn't read the rapier when we got it. Rapier, it's a French name, I think. Standard thrusting sword, regular 100 attack can be delivered with shield help held up. Can parry with use of left hand. Thrusting attacks pierce and are effective against foes with hard exteriors, but the wielder is left open to damage after a swi swing. So it's a, it's a thrusting sword, as you would normally guess, but the interesting thing is that you can hold up your shield and attack from behind the shield. That's quite strong. The spears also can do that. All these, or the upper two, I think that's not a spear type weapon. Regular thrust? Regular thrust. Yeah, maybe it can. Weapon type pilot, yeah. Okay. Those are both spear weapon types. You can attack from behind the shield with one of those. Spear with blade attached to broad point. Both long reach and can slice. The wide range of the spear makes it adaptable to many situations. Its strength lies in its length, but in cramped quarters this backfires and slices ricochet of walls. Yeah, quite interesting, but I'm not one for the melee weapons in this one because I'm a sorcerer. So, detoggle the binoculars because I, before I do anything stupid. There are more serpents, I see them. We now know that we need two attacks for them. Let's go through the forest again to wake up any trees that might come after me. Like that one, but that one is dead already. Okay, no trees left, but there's a big guy.
Oh, he wanted to slow me because I was going near him, so he thought that was a great idea. Oh, I need some spells left if I want to survive what's in there. And that's another stone guy. Should be the last one. He didn't aggro. Can take the small arrow. Okay, and it, he didn't drop. Okay, two times eight did do everything we needed for that. Okay. So we're done here. We can now tag this damn thing. And we missed it, because why not? Kill it. Kill it. I think I did, still didn't find a bow and arrow. So I still can't do what I wanted to do with the other thing. Okay. Now comes a fight that frightens me a bit. Read message, enemy ahead. Okay. But I just thought of that something. If I'm not stupid, I should find something here. Caster head. That's also... Wow. Did I just use my spell here? Wow. What does the message say? Monster? No, no monster. But... But... Touch summon sign. Which Beatrice? It's an NPC summon. Which is quite nice. Because uh, for the next fight, it's great to be a sorcerer, and it sucks to be a melee fighter. Uh, so it's great to have witch bear trees at your side. And as I won't be human for many of the bosses, I will take this chance to so show you some NPC co-op action. As yeah, so if you later say, yeah, you cheated by using the witch here. I'm a sorcerer. I can kill this next th thing very easily on my own. I don't need witch bear trees, but I wanted to show that. Yeah. And we get attacked by the butterfly I showed you earlier. It's flying in from above. And I'm a bit afraid because I haven't really... Wow. We both missed. And I definitely hit the uh, dodge button before the thinking. You see now which Beatrice hit her once and almost killed her. I uh, killed the butterfly. I hit the B button and after that the project has landed. But this damn B button has like a second of delay. I'm still not used to that. I'm still used to like the fast dodging that is I'd say it's I would mostly uh, say from Dark Souls 2 where I got this feeling from. We're able to dodge fast. I just want to go past all of you please. Hello. You. No time to summon witch bear trees. I don't. I won't use the great heavy sword arrow as that might be too slow. First off, I need to find my blood stain. Is she flying from above again? Okay. Okay, maybe I should use the Great Heavy.
Okay, I didn't see the queue for that. This time I did. And I didn't want to use the damn binoculars. How do I... Wow! Wow! What a waste of time! Damn it! So that's the possibility to land your hits when you're a melee guy. And you have to run away so you can't hit, get, don't get hit by the explosion. And I killed her. So I did it by myself. Very easy. First try. Yeah. Really, first try. That's how I called the video. First try, Moonlight Butterfly. <laughs> oh man. And run and run and running around and running around and spinning around and spinning around. And up to this place where we find someone that looks just like Andre. And he has the Watchtower Basement Key and the Divine Ember and a Homeward Bone. Whenever you find a Homeward Bone in these games, it almost certainly tells you that you are in a dead end and you have to return to the next bon uh, last bonfire by using one of those. Uh, what else did we get? Uh, the Soul of the Moonlight Butterfly. Sort of the mystical moonlight butterfly which flitters in the dark root garden. Special beings have special souls. The butterfly's soul is a creation of seeds, the scaleless. Used to acquire a huge amount of souls or to create a unique weapon. And that's why I will never use one of them because I want to see what the unique weapons do. Maybe I will with some of them just use them because I know they give like a humongous hammer or something like that which I can't use because I don't have the strength for it. Watchtower basement here is the key to the basement of the watchtower in the Anek Berg. The basement of the watchtower forms a stone cell. There are rumors of a hero turned hollow who was locked away by a dear friend for his own good of course. I'm very much afraid of that because I don't know how to attack him as a sorcerer. And that's the last thing I, I will read now. The Ember. The Divine Ember is the Ember acquired for Weapon Ascension. Divine Embers are property of the Church and intended for Divine Blacksmiths. Assign plus 5 standard weapon to Divine Weapon. Divine Weapon can be reinforced to plus 5. Divine Weapons are for Undead Hunting. Use against Undead and the Pawns of Necromancers. So now we just use one of those Homeward Bones. Return to the last bonfire, so don't get killed by the stone giants. And now we can use our souls to level up, which we get intelligence. I take one attunement so we can get progress towards the next slot. We get the next slot at 19. I just go forward and do that. And it you my spell, my last slot will be another soul error, so I can use the ninety soul error, leave the bonfire. Uh, I think now I'm out of time to record for today, so that will be for now.